cue for the uh, when the camera starts will be I'll just shout out action, okay? And that'll be when you start, okay? Action. My name is Peter Katz, and this is the Parnassus Academy of the Arts. I have dedicated my life to the arts because I believe that today, more than ever before in the history of the human race, we need understanding. Understanding is contingent upon discernment. Discernment is based on sensitivity, and there is nothing that will develop sensitivity like the arts. I have many projects going here. I paint, I write, I compose, and I invent. I teach art, music, chess, and fencing. In music, I teach voice, piano, and theory. I'm painting two murals and doing several paintings. I am writing an operetta. I have just finished a piano concerto, and I'm now orchestrating it. In addition to this, of course, we have close to 100 students here, and close to 100 lessons a week, which keeps me harping quite a bit. When I found this place in North Glen, it seemed ideally suited for the activities and the work that we were going to do. We could have classes here, art classes, and possibly dance classes, and fencing classes, because the area was large enough. Action! Good morning, Cecil. Are you ready for a big day? Action. Now, turn yourself on and give me some music. I used to teach in my home on uh, 101st Avenue, and I had the studio in the basement there. Very good. Cut. Now let's see what that sound looks like. In the meantime, the building was sold and the new owners raised the rent by $125, making it prohibitive for our cash flow. It became impossible for us to raise that much and still come out ahead, <laughs> you know, make a living and so forth. And so many, many of our projects would be remaining unfinished or temporarily stalled. By this method, we hope to be able to someday help deaf people to speak more clearly. Action. Because they can see what the words look like. Now start the record player and the note tester. Originally, we had been told that we could live here. Then, after we moved in and the, and the building was sold, we were told that we couldn't live here. That meant that I had to take an apartment in addition to this. All right, Cecil, that's enough for now. The interesting thing about this is not so much the fact that we are moving to a smaller area and smaller quarters and have to store things, but that 40 years of a man's life and dreams and building can be wiped out overnight like this within one week, so to speak, and there is nothing left but uh, just a, a front room where I teach piano. But the real loser is society because no one will ever know in this entire world what I could have given if I would have had an opportunity, nor what the world would have been like afterwards. And with this one can only say, who do you think you are anyway? Uh, Sometimes it is valid and sometimes it isn't. I don't think that in this case anyone can crawl into another person's brain to understand what they are capable of contributing. Action. Among the things I teach is voice and piano. Right now I'm in the process of writing down a piano accompaniment 
for a composition which has been written by me uh, of the poem High Flight by McGee. It seems to me that when society crushes or frustrates the attempts of an artist or individual who wishes to do nothing but to just contribute something to society, that then the society is the loser. Now, you see, this point B here can be chosen anywhere on this vertical line that you desire. Mm -hmm. But once you have chosen that, then you set the scale of the drawing, and everything else has to be accordingly measured. Now, that was a mistake. Oh, why? Well, because if you move over there, then I do this. I take your knight, and if you take me back like this, then I'd make a checkmate. We have now reached a point where the human entity can be computed, more or less. However, the one uncomputable element is creativity, because it deals with something new. In addition, Cecil is... Uh, by the way, Cecil is the robot. He is in... Uh, process of being built. Now I'm going to have to take him completely apart, which I had to do when I moved him over here, and then I assembled him again. Now I will have to take him apart again. That's going to be quite a job. Yes, uh, that, that will be a job in itself. You and have to do that yourself. Right? Yes, I, I may need some help uh, to accomplish that safely and without damage to the equipment. But uh, it is not too complicated. But uh, the hooking up is, is, let us say, a little bit more difficult. Your, your phone call. What? Your phone call. Oh. Hello. Hello. Uh, is Mrs. Naden there? Yes, I'm sorry, but uh, we won't be able to give any lessons this afternoon because we have to move out of here. And we have to be gone by the first. So there's a tremendous amount of work involved in moving all the equipment. And we will have to move all our, all our things out of here with the, all these different items. So if you excuse us, we won't give any lessons this afternoon. Okay, thank you. It also meant that uh, many of our equipment uh, and uh, office furniture would have to be stored in a storage facility. So with this all staring us in the face, we hope that we will be able to accomplish this without too much of a strain on our health. But the moving is quite difficult also because uh, it is very easy to nudge a corner or a, a landing, a rail on the stairs or something and, and damage some of the more sensitive parts which are on the outside of the main unit. So we will have to move them with great care. It has been said that society moves ahead over the backs of its neurotics because these people are harassed and persecuted for their creativity and many of them become neurotic and many of them become old <laughs> like I am and it's amazing to me the people who know so much understand so little okay since me and Sam are doing this uh I was wondering if you have any message toward uh, the youth of tomorrow. This venture was intended to be dedicated 
to the young people to help them develop the creative abilities of their minds and to study and learn to cope with the creative force inside of them. Now consider one thing. Now that we have broken through the gravitational field of the Earth and traveled in space and landed men on the moon, don't you think it is about time that we break through the gravitational field of the soul? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay. Okay. Now, I'll get over here. Why is it funny? Does that look silly? No, it looks great. <laughs>